Good evening, my friends. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'll get you worn up with a few announcements here tonight. This is Transfiguration Weekend, which always means that we are just about to hit the season of Lent. Ash Wednesday is this coming Wednesday. I want to invite you to be a part of our Ash Wednesday services taking place at 1 o'clock and 6.30. Come and join us here. We will have the imposition of ashes. We will have Holy Communion at each of those services. Um, the 1 o'clock service will be live streamed. So you can watch it on the live stream. You can also watch it throughout the day or in the following days. Um, and I want to encourage you, if you're available, if you're able to come to the 1 o'clock service, please consider it so we can um, have some spots open for the 6.30 for those people who are working. So Ash Wednesday, this Wednesday, uh, reminder, also kicks off our season of midweek Linton worship services at 6.30. Um, which we'll be having on the Wednesdays of Lent, and on um, each of those services, we will start things off at 6.15 with a hymn sing, which is a really fun time, so come and join us um, for that. So we are officially in, almost in, uh, the season of Lent, uh, starting this week. Um, there's information in your bulletins about the Honduras virtual mission uh, trip that will be taking place on Tuesday and Friday. This week, and you can read a little bit about what they're going to be doing in that. I think it's a really creative idea, seeing as they're not actually physically able to go down there this year. Um, so you can read about that and uh, direct your attention there. Um, and then our schedule um, here, notable things, Monday, no school. Again. Oh, no school on Monday. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You can come and join me for a new Bible study starting on Monday. We're going to be talking about good works yeah. in the Christian life. What is the place of good works? Why should we should do good works? Uh, how we should view our good works? So we'll start that on Monday. Um, and remember those serve, uh, those Bible studies are Monday and Thursday, 10 to 11. So I want to invite you to, be co to come and be a part of that. We're starting something new. Uh, let's see. There's that. 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 Ooh, that. Any anything? The option coming up. Oh, school option. March 11th through the 14th is online. Postcards should be going out hopefully by the end of next week. Okay. With the QR code to log in when it starts. And anybody has anything they would like to donate to the auction or a service they would like to provide um, to donate to auction off, we would be very happy to take that. Okay, very good. And because it's online, we're not having a theme this year? Unfortunately, no. Okay. Next year, we have the theme already planned. So. We can't unveil it yet. Oh, no. Okay, okay. No. Right. I can't unveil it yet. Okay, so I'm super excited for next year. So anyway, uh, we are in the auction March 11th through the 14th. Oh, it's like multiple. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. Okay, very good. Give people some time to go in and look at all the items and decide really, and then start bidding. Okay, very okay. good. All right, well, we're looking forward to that. Um, would you please rise and meet together, join me in, and sing them together.
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace to you from him who is, and who was, and who is to come. To him who loves us, and has freed us from our sins by his blood. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. We worship the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with joyful songs and thanksgiving. We know that the Lord is our God. The Lord is good, and his love endures forever. Come and see the glory of your Savior. Sing praises for his love, mercy, and grace. For he is the Lord of all and the rock of our salvation. Our souls find rest in God alone. Our salvation comes from him. He alone is our rock and our salvation. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Dear friends, there is no escaping this truth. You and I are sinners. The burden of our sins weigh heavily on our souls. Come, confess your sins and leave them at the foot of the cross. <laughs>
when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, they will, you will not be burned. Through the flames will not set you ablaze. Rejoice, for the Lord is loving, faithful, and merciful. He has heard your confession. Washed in the blood of Jesus and according to God's grace, your sins are forgiven. You are set free. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. Our Old Testament reading is from 2 Kings chapter 2, starting at verse 1. <clears throat> when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal to the Jordan River. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. He replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken away from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. Our epistle reading tonight is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 4. Paul writes, Therefore, since we have such a hope in the glory of the ministry of the Spirit, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. Their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the Old Covenant is read. It has not been removed, because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary... By setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of, the, of unbelievers, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. 
For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Would you please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel here tonight? Our reading for the Transfiguration comes from Mark chapter 9, starting at verse 2. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is our gospel reading for tonight. Please be seated. Peter had, and James and John agreed that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. They imagined the Messiah as a king who would destroy their enemies and establish his kingdom. But it was neither the time nor the place for that kind of conquest. So Jesus began showing his disciples a very different part of God's salvation plan. <coughs> How he would be taken to the city, not to be crowned king, but to suffer and die. Such distressing news left them confused and disheartened as they followed Jesus up the mountain to pray. When prayer was needed the most, the disciples felt too discouraged to pray and fell asleep instead. Perhaps a dream of the perfect kingdom that now seemed out of reach. They did not understand that without the shedding of his blood, there would be no forgiveness of sins, and without forgiveness, the deadly curse of sin and eternal death would continue to rule. They did not understand, so they slept. A moment later, their dreams were interrupted, and they awoke to a much greater vision. Jesus was standing before them with a brightness as brilliant as the sun itself. His clothes glowed the brightest white imaginable. On either side of Jesus stood Moses, the great lawgiver, and Elijah, the great prophet, and they were all talking together. The disciples were astounded and amazed that they were in the presence of Moses, whom God knew face to face, and Elijah, who had once called God's fire down from heaven. When Moses and Elijah were about to leave, Peter explained to Jesus, Don't leave. Let us build three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't really know what he was saying. He just wanted the glory of this moment to last forever. But as the words left Peter's mouth, he was interrupted by the voice of God. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Jesus was not just another prophet or teacher. He was the very son of God. Hear him, the father said. The disciples fell with their faces to the ground in fear. God had spoken directly to them. Jesus stepped over to the disciples and gently touched them. Stand and do not be afraid, he said. They looked up to see that Jesus was now standing alone. His glory once again covered in humanity. Do not tell anyone about this until after the resurrection, he cautioned them. They would soon see the Messiah suffer and die, but by the power of his resurrection, they would also witness the kingdom of God breaking into human history. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you for the manifestation of your great glory one day to three of your disciples. Lord, we thank you for the great manifestation of the love of God that has come into the world through your life, through your ministry, through your death and resurrection. Lord, we thank you that this love lives in us and that we have been invited to share this gospel truth, to share this love with the world around us. Tonight, I ask that you would bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts. May they be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Dear friends, we are gathered together before one another tonight and in the sight of God to talk about love. Love. This weekend in our culture, you may have noticed, is all about love. Conversation hearts and Valentine's cards, little cupids flying around. All kinds of love is included on this Valentine's holiday. This weekend, we tell our mamas we love them. We tell our spouses, our boyfriends, our girlfriends, we love them. We tell our friends how much they mean to us, our kids, our classmates, our co-workers, our gifted little reminders of how important they are in our life. Love is special. Love is powerful. Love is important. Love is all you need. And that, my friends, is all the syrupy, sappy sweetness with a side of sugar you're going to get out of me when it comes to love. But if I told you that our culture has little to no idea what true love is. What if I told you that the word love is the most misused, misconstrued, abused word and idea and concept in all of the world? I bet you'd believe me, wouldn't you? Why? Well, because the more loving and tolerant and developed and progressed we become as a world or as a nation, the more hate and violence and fighting we see. Let me ask you this. If our world had any clue, any clue at all what love is, wouldn't we have become more loving over the years as a result? For this sinful, fallen world, love is an affection. Love is a feeling. Love is a high-stakes poker game where you don't know who's bluffing, and you must assure yourself that you have the biggest hand. And it can be summarized with this. Worldly love find at, finds as its goal the self. At the end, the goal, the telos statement, is the self. I love you because we're friends. I love you because you make me feel good. I love people that I get along with, that think like me, that like to do the same stuff I like to do. And don't tell me the things that I don't want to hear, even if I really need to hear them. And when love is based on feelings and love is based on affections, let the roller coaster ride begin. And when the ride stops and when the feelings stop, those finicky, those finicky, fickle little things that they are, so does the love. The love is gone. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank God that we, in our own sinful nature, know nothing about love. Thank God that God is love and shows the world true love. Because if affections and emotions and how we make God feel was the determining factor, the cross, my friends, would never have happened. The empty tomb would never have happened. God who is love and his love for the whole world was focused all in on one person, the person of Jesus of Nazareth, the fullness of God. 
Jesus change forever what we know about love. Jesus transformed, he transfigured love. How we receive it, how we think of it, and how we show it to the world. We see it clearly on this day of transfiguration that we are celebrating. The beginning of our transfiguration reading begins tonight from Mark chapter 9 with these words, after six days. Well, the question is six days after what? Six days after a very, very important conversation that Jesus had with his disciples that went thusly. Here's Mark chapter 8, 31 and 32. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And then Mark says, he said it plainly to them. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Four things, four things that must have not been in these disciples' playbook. Suffering, rejection, death, and a resurrection. Peter pipes up. Far be it from you, Lord, he says. This shall never, ever happen to you, Lord. But Peter's love, Peter's idea of love, and the world's idea of love is a love that looks to self. Master, we've worked too hard. Master, we've done too much, and it's not going to come to an end like this. I don't want to lose you. I don't want you to leave us. But Jesus' love is different, and Jesus' mission is different. He transforms and he transfigures what real love is in the world. And after saying those famous words, get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but rather on the things of men. Jesus said this, Mark 34, 834. If anyone would come after me, follow me, know me, love me, be identified by me, which is everything you did when you followed a rabbi. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And we said that worldly love finds as its goal, as its end, as its pursuit, the self. Biblical love, God's love, Christ's love, finds as its goal the other. The other. In fact, we are told this in Romans 13, verses 8 and 10. Paul says, Oh, no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of God's law, of those Ten Commandments. The law of God says that we should love our neighbor as ourself. And I love myself. Ooh. I bet you do too. Many times that includes denying ourselves when we pick up our cross to follow him. This denying of self and following Jesus and picking up our cross just like Jesus and being like him and following him to the place where he didn't want to go, this is never more applicable than it is now in this coming season of Lent. You know what Peter would have preferred? If Jesus' popularity went viral, it was just like stratospheric. Peter would have preferred Jesus was not arrested. Peter would have preferred that he did not have to watch Jesus beaten, mostly to death. Peter would have preferred if he didn't have to deny knowing Jesus for the threat of facing the same kind of pain. Peter would have preferred if Jesus did not have to die. But Peter didn't know the fullness of God's love yet. Jesus was preparing witnesses 
preparing disciples to go out with the good news of God's love. So after six days, verse 2, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and he led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured there before them. And he laid a big, great, big, important point. You know, the scene must have been amazing. Jesus' clothes, we are told, became radiant white, whiter than anyone could bleach them. He was beautiful. He was powerful. He was full of glory. He was talking with heroes from of old, men that Peter, James, and John could only dream of meeting, Moses and Elijah. It was also wonderful. Peter pipes up again. Verse 5. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good that we are here. Let us make three tents or shelters, dwelling places. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He didn't know what to say. They were terrified. In the person of Jesus Christ, God's love is made known to the world. In the person of Jesus Christ, God's love is made fully known to the world. What a natural response from Peter. Wow! This. This is what you were telling us to wait for. This must be it, Jesus we are on the mountain peak. How could it get much better than this? You have revealed yourself to us in divinity, and that divinity is shining through. This must be why you came. If people were just able to see this, that's all they would need. We can invite people up on this mountain. We can even charge an admission at that Jesus, and they would... Hey, they will see who you are, and they will know, and they will follow you, and they will be better because of you. Pretty good plan, Peter. Verse 7. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice, it is the voice of God, came out of the cloud, and he says once again, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Jesus says, me simply showing you this, showing you all of my glory, this is not my love for the world. My love for the world is that everything you see here today, all of this glory, all of this power, all of this beauty, all of this might, all of this purity, all of this righteousness is going to come down off of this mountain and be humiliated in every sense of the word. We'll be spit on and made fun of. The glory that you see today is going to be beaten and then scourged, thrown in the dirt, and then made to carry his own cross to his own death. He will be stripped naked, exposed in every way to the world, exposed to the elements, exposed to the weight of your sin, and he will die. And he will die for those who will love him, and he will die for those who will never love him. That, he said, that is my love for the world. He said, it's not about me. It's about you. That is true love, says Jesus. That is transfigured love. Transfiguration Day always sets the stage for Lent. On the weekend before Ash Wednesday, we find ourselves... On the mountaintop with Jesus. Look how beautiful he is. Look how glorious he is. What a sneak peek into his kingdom. Where we see Jesus. And we see Moses. 
And we see Elijah, and we see the heavenly scene. We see our grandmas and grandpas and our parents and our friends and the saints of old and people who have been separated from me in this life all waiting for us. We want to be there. We want to stay there. Peter says, it's good, Lord. It would be easier for us to stay here, Lord. But it is more necessary for love's sake. That you come down off that mountain. It is more necessary for love's sake for you to set your face towards Jerusalem where you will suffer, be rejected, be killed, and on the third day be raised. And we are here to take that journey with Jesus. We are here to take the journey with our Lord. Because he has changed the way we look at love. And because Christ is in us, Christ is in you, and you are marked by him because you have put on Christ, says the scriptures, the world will know you. The world will know us. And the world will know him by our love. Jesus says shortly before that death on the cross in John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this. This is it. That someone laid down his life for his friends. This is the story of Lent. This is the story we are about to enter into. This is the story that we have to share. This is the story that we have to invite people to be a part of. This is the story we get to live in. This is the story we get to live out again this year. Forty days. Forty days to remind ourselves of the serious nature of our sin. Forty days to journey with Jesus to Jerusalem. Forty days. Not to fear COVID or to fear restrictions or to fear our crazy culture, but 40 days to fear eternal death and hell, which you have earned for yourself and I have earned for myself. And 40 days to humbly kneel before the cross, to kneel before the Christ, and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. I don't need lower numbers. I don't need a stimulus. I don't need different governmental leaders. I need you. That's all I need. 1 John 4, 8 and 9. Anyone who does not love does not know God. Because God is love, says his good friend. And this, the love of God, was made known, was made manifest among us. That God sent his only son into the world. So that we might live through him. God's love is life for the world. That is the love that lives in us. That is the love that has been deposited into us, says Scripture, so that we might share it with the world. It is life for the world, life for everyone who calls on and believes in the name of Jesus. And on this Valentine's Day weekend, may the transfigured love of Jesus Christ the love that looks to the good and to the life of the neighbor among us, may it teach you, may it transform you, may it lead you in righteousness for Christ's namesake. Love is special. Love is powerful. Love is important. Love is all you need. And God loves me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have completely changed the way we view love in this world through your life and through your death and through your resurrection. Lord, a love that looks to the needs of others. Lord, we know that you loved us to death. And we thank you that through the resurrection of Christ, you are loving us all the way to eternal life in your kingdom. Lord, we ask that in this season that we are preparing to enter into in Lent, that we might journey with you once again, experiencing love and knowing the fullness of it and sharing it with the world around us. 
Lord, we thank you that you have saved us with a mighty hand from our sin, from our suffering, from our eternal damnation, Lord, and that you have invited us into your eternal kingdom. We thank and praise you always. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and sing. to him 
as he forgives and preserves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, with the appearance of Moses and Elijah and our Lord's glorious transfiguration, you reveal to us that all of the law and the prophets are fulfilled in him. Send your blessing upon all who serve, Lord, who serve you, Lord, that all of our preaching and teaching would flow from the right understanding that all Holy Scripture testifies of Christ and all that he has done and continues to do for our eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Father, from whom all fatherhood under heaven is named, support and bless every Christian home, that husbands and wives would be devoted to one another, parents would pass on the faith to their children by word and by deed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you alone established all authority on earth. Bless those entrusted with this responsibility, both here and abroad, that they would serve with integrity and honor for the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, graciously comfort and strengthen those who are sick, hospitalized, or enduring ongoing treatments. Lord, we ask that you would be with a friend of uh, Kay Anderson, Lisa Biker, who is um, battling brain stem tum tumors at this time. Uh, has been recently placed on hospice care. Lord, we ask that you would bless her, um, that you would give her comfort and peace in this time. Uh, for Meryl and uh, William Jacobs, Lord, friend of the Halberts, uh, both battling COVID, we ask that you would bring healing in this time. Uh, for Skip and Donna's brother-in-law, um, Joe, hospitalized, Lord, with COVID, we ask that you would bring him the healing he needs in this time. Uh, Lord, we give you thanks that Lars Emblem is out of the hospital doing quite well and will be uh, returning to work soon. We thank you that you have heard us uh, on his behalf and have healed him, Lord. Uh, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember on this day the glorious manifestation of your Son's divinity on the Mount of Transfiguration. Teach us to listen to Jesus and ever fix our eyes on him and his innocent suffering and death for our forgiveness. By your grace and mercy, strengthen us to remain faithful in all circumstances of trial, temptation, and persecution. Preserve us to the end that we may have a blessed death, believing in your beloved Son, with whom you are well pleased. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You, dear children, are from God, and you have overcome the evil that is in the world, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Let us love one another. For love comes from God. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. With, With God's help, we, we will love each other because he first loved us and, and we are grateful. That's my fault. <laughs> May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That's your part, too. Oh, go in peace. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And we sing our final song. <laughs>
Please be seated. Would you lay our ushers dismissed about two, and I'll see you in the back.